just forgot to send it. It's two o'clock. Got nine people watching. Amazing. Oh. So, one more time, just in case we have new people. Um, this is our Living Room Theater series hosted by the class of 2021 at Baldwin Wallace, um, the BFA acting class. And we are doing this during this corona time to keep um, creative and artistic and to read plays we love and have fun with our friends and share them with our um, colleagues and peers. And it's very exciting. Um, this week, this is our fifth episode. This week we are reading The Curve of Your Spine is My Home, which is a play I've wrote um, for about a year or so. And we have three wonderful actors. We have Lindsay Shiner as Balaam, Isabella Fay as Habakkuk, and Ryan as Gomer. And I'm gonna be just reading the stage directions. Um, and then just a really quick warning. Um, there's explicit language, sexual content, um, drug use, uh, mentions of death, and religious illusions. So if any of that makes you uncomfortable, feel free to join us next week. This is not the play for you. Um, and speaking of next week, we are going to be reading Big Shoes by Sam Summer, which is awesome because it's also another original play. So feel free to join us for that one. But we are going to get started. Feel free to react, um, have your questions and comments down below. We will not have an intermission because it's pretty short. It's a little over an hour. Um, but I'm happy to answer any questions afterwards or anything that you're wondering about. But yeah, we're gonna get started. So this is The Curve of Your Spine is My Home. All right, note. The following should make you uncomfortable with melancholic nostalgia like when you pretend you're in a music video in the car and your dad catches you in the mirror, or when you're absently picking your nose in public and a teenage girl scoffs at you. There are certain coincidences that occur throughout the play. They should feel like only you notice them. Time, any time in the present, but preferably now, place, a suburb in Western Pennsylvania. It should feel like there's a vacuum turned on during the entire play, sucking all of the air out of the space that is our town. People, Balaam the soothsayer, 23, aspiring poet, but currently working at an indoor trampoline park, a fierce Gemini. Gomer, the harlot, 20, a student at Carlo, loves mac and cheese more than anyone or anything. Habakkuk, the mus musician. 24, a viola apprentice, apprentice with the Pittsburgh Symphony, collects adult coloring books. And Jezebel, the queen, 25, Catholic, tucks in her children and husband every single night. She is kind. Part one. Balaam is swinging on a rusty swing set. She looks way too old to fit on it, but she is very comfortable swinging. It's 3.27 a.m. and she is smoking a mango flavored jewel. The pack runs out. Fuck. She throws the jewel on the ground, bored. She twists herself on the swing and lets it go free. We watched her do this three times. Perhaps she sighs a long, obnoxious, ugh. After the third time, she lays face down, starfish style on the damp grass. Gomer enters, sucking on a key necklace around his neck. Thank you for showing up, Gado. Really appreciate it. No problem. I literally had nothing else to do in my childhood home at 3 a.m., except maybe jack off to the poster of Ashley Tisdale on my wall. I thought I'd pass, uh, so you rang? I called you here because I decided I'm going to murder you with my bare hands. Gomer stares. Balaam seems manic. Joking. <laughs> Fucking joking. Jesus Christ. Trying to lighten the... Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not really in the mood to joke around, and quite honestly, it weirds me out that you are. I mean, seriously, B, are you okay? I'd actually rather not have a therapy session with a man-child in a full-length leather coat right now, so yeah, I think I'm okay. Come on, I thought you liked this thing. Gomer twirls like an amateur ballerina. It's embarrassing. Oh my god. We they laugh. <laughs> so, why am I here? We need to talk to her. Who? Jez. Deafening silence. Gomer picks up a pebble and tosses it, tosses it off the stage. Do you realize how shitty this is for me? Like, I'm genuinely wondering if you do. I'm not trying to be a dick, but like, she was my sister. 
my blood. I, I don't know if you're in denial or insane or just coked out, but I need you for my sake to use your brain. Homer. She's dead, B. She's not coming back. In fact, her body was cremated and her ashes are in my trunk right now. So it's real. It's very real to me. My sister is inside a box. Jezebel is dust. I, I could feel her between my fingers if I wanted to breathe her in. So no, we can't talk to her. And I don't really understand how you can be so fucking like <laughs> casual about this. This happened. This is real. Okay, I know. I know it's real, but there's like this weird burning in me. I know that sounds cliche or I don't know. I just, I need to know. I have to know what she meant. Meant by what? Interrupted by the entrance of Habakkuk. Nearly running into the swing set, Habakkuk is desperately texting what feels like a five paragraph essay on climate change. Yes, you're here. So how's life in luxury? Hello, Balaam. Um, okay, so I need to get home preferably like now-ish or in the next three minutes. So what do you need? What for? You got a dick to suck I don't know about? Okay, um, I'm gonna leave. No, 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 wait, wait, I'm sorry. He sucks, but just look at me, look at me. It's okay. I need you. You need me? Yes, I need you. Balaam pulls Habakkuk awkwardly in for an odd side hug that turns into an embrace. Habakkuk breathes for the first time in days. They close their eyes, forehead to forehead. <laughs> okay, uh, can we stay on task here, freaks? Shut up. So, all right, so what do you need me so desperately for? We need to talk to Jess. Okay, before you cut me off, her death was a symbol. It was symbolic of the way society betrayed her. She could have been a hero or a leader. Come on, Balaam, come on. She died from choking on a fucking cough drop. Don't pretend like this was some human rights movement. She was a conservative white woman who didn't vote. Yes, she was cool. She was more than cool. She was everything to all of us. And she was kind, but we can't keep like replaying our memories with her and pretending her life meant more than it did. If we're being honest, no one will remember her after Sammy dies. She's not in any history books. She's dead. She's dead and she wasn't special. Clearly you don't get it. Neither of you get it. I need something from her. Information. And you know, if you won't help me get it, I'll do it my fucking self. Balaam stomps off stage. Habakkuk and Gomer awkwardly sit on the swings together. Habakkuk starts laughing at seemingly nothing. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Remember when um, you were a freshman and you walked into my chemistry class like all flustered and were like, quick, you need it in the main office right now. It's an emergency. And I felt like my grandma died or I had detention or someone found out I plagiarized my creative writing essay or something. And then you took me to the girl's bathroom on, on the third floor. And then <laughs> you gave me like a freaking like weed gummy bear. And I thought I was such a badass. So we spent like the rest of the day laying on the scalding hot concrete outside, staring at stars that weren't there. <laughs> you remember all of that? Of course I do. I may be a cold bitch now, but I do still have a heart. Mm. I wasn't aware. So, how's the hubby? Hmm? How's the hubby? Oh my God. What? Don't do that. Do what? Hey, don't do that, Gomer. Do what? Call him my hubby, like some weirdo. Like he's not my literal husband. We're married, G, and it's serious. Oh, it's serious now, is it? Yes, it is. It's serious, Gomer. Oh, it didn't really feel serious a month ago, did it? Don't go there. No, I'm going to go there. I'm allowed to. It's my life. It affects me. I care about you. I care about you. You and your music and your frizzy hair and the scar on your nose and the softness of the skin on your thighs. I care about it all. Every inch. 
let me in. Please, you're not happy, like really happy. I, I can see it. Look, Jesus Christ, look, I, I just saw it now in the corners of your beady little eyes. So why are you trapping yourself in this like, this facade of a relationship? Get out. I'm offering you me. I'm offering you a way out. Take it, have a cookie. That's not how it works. Like I have a life, Gomer. It it's, how it it's how it can work. I'm pregnant, Gomer. Oh. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, that's, <laughs> that's incredible. Yeah, thanks. Wait, so. Nope. Nope, we're not, we're not going there, no. Okay. Okay, well, um, I don't know where Balaam is, so I'm, I'm gonna. Balaam enters panting, looking as if she's seen a ghost. Quick, in a circle, Gomer, give me the key. What? The key, around your neck, come on. Oh, it was hers. Exactly, give it to me now. Okay, okay. Balaam grabs the key and draws a circle in the dirt with it. She guides our unlikely trio to sit in a ceremonial yet awkward fashion, holding hands. Um, hey Jez, hey. It was here. It was right here on this dirt when we first talked about it. We just gotten back from freaking Bible study and you told me, you told me that you thought you were possessed by God. Do you remember that? <laughs> Crazy bitch. You said it wasn't as dramatic as it sounds, but it just felt like, it felt like he was in you. Like when you sat down to pray, you were praying to yourself. <laughs> you said it was even something like you were psychic or like all knowing or something. Like you would just ask God for something and it would just happen. And it just felt like, it felt like too much power, too much responsibility. I guess that was your downfall. You were both the holy and the fallen angel. They wait for response, silence. Obviously nothing happens, except that maybe the wind blows a little harder or a car light turns on or a siren goes off a few blocks down. Jez, please, please, Jez. I'm not fucking around anymore. <sighs> Did I do it wrong? Maybe I should have. Well, um, it's okay. No, no, I think I should have. I should have made a smaller circle. I think I needed to make it more symmetrical to, it's like, it's like, fuck. I don't know, it should have worked. I'm sorry, Jez, I should have, I should have tried harder. I'm sorry. Raylam cries, surprising herself. She rolls into a ball in the fetal position, like roadkill. Okay. I, uh, I guess you're too busy. I'm sorry to bother you. Are you, are you okay? Yeah, it's just, uh, my stupid high is wearing off, that's all. It's just, it's, it's just that. Habakkuk and Gomer quietly watch as Balaam pulls a pill bottle from her pocket and takes probably one too many. Maybe we should take you home, okay? Nah. I'll just sleep here. <laughs> wait, uh, wait, guys, do you remember at the funeral yesterday when they played a thousand years as like some homage to her, like literally the song from Twilight. Did she ever even say she liked that song? Like, literally, what the fuck? No, I have no idea. That was probably some evil scheme by my mom. Yeah, maybe. Okay, um, I'm gonna show you something, but promise not to make fun of me. Habakkuk pulls out her phone as she continues to speak. Oh God. Wanna know a secret? I don't know, do I? Jesus, you're so extra, it's exhausting. Well, I was the one playing it. 
the the um the the song from Twilight. I told Kathy that I wanted to play um at the service, and she just said I play this because I guess it was her favorite song. Hard to believe, uh, but I wasn't gonna say no. I asked if I could play it in the back so no one could see me. It would just just kind of ruin my reputation. Um, but I wanted to do it for jazz. How honorable of you. So why don't you prove it to Mozart? Let's see. Habakkuk presses play on the video. The stupid pop song turns grim as the memories of the funeral come flooding back. As we watch our heroes crowd around the phone, they all of a sudden look very small. Okay, okay, you can stop now. That was cute, I guess. Thank you. That's what I strive for as an artist, being cute. Yeah. Gomer's phone rings. He picks up the second he hears the noise, relieved for a way out. Oh, uh, what? Yes, uh, I'm at my dorm. I forgot you had my location turned on <laughs> like a stalker. Okay, okay, fine. I'm with Balaam, yes. I have her it in my trunk. Okay, I will bring it in the morning. What's wrong? Why are you, why are you calling me at 4 a.m.? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I love you. I'll be there soon. Okay, I need to go. My mom's been, she's been having these nightmares about Jezebel. I just, uh, I need to... No, no, wait, please. Now you want me? I don't make it weird. I just, like, just want one more night with us. I know I've been a bitch, and I kind of abandoned you the past few months, but I love you both. And I think we need this night. Just a few hours to dedicate to her or something. Why are you just now caring, huh? Are you trying to live out your little fantasy of pretending we're some friend group from an A24 movie? Or, or what's your game here? I don't understand. Because I fucking killed her, okay? Horrific silence. Well, I mean, I, mean, I, I didn't kill her. I, I, don't, I don't know. She just called me like two weeks ago. And she said she had this nasty sore throat and she had to sing in church that weekend. It was for like the offering, like when they ask for money and she just sounded so excited. <laughs> so I haven't heard her like talk like that in a long time. So she wanted to know if any opera students I worked with had a quick remedy and it, it was sweet. It made me feel important. Um, like she needed me. It reminded me of our freshman year at Oberlin when I was like her pseudo mom. I had to wake her up for class almost every day. I loved it. <laughs> I like, I relished in every moment. So I asked my colleague and she said there were these cough drops you can get from eBay that will like save your voice. So I, I sent her some and it wasn't a big deal. It was nothing. Knowing what I know now, I wish I was God. I wish I could turn back the dial and not do something so fucking stupid and mundane. And I couldn't have stopped it. I know, like in my head. Logically, it's not my fault. I just, I supplied her with the thing that became her end. She choked on a cough drop, like Jezebel, the Catholic INFP with a perfect little family died choking on a cough drop. It just like felt lame. It felt like I subconsciously did it. And I, I, I know, I know I didn't want that obviously, but I like, I also don't really know what I mean. Um, what am I capable of? Like it just, it, it felt like I was the beginning of her end. I, I didn't know that. Yeah. And I found out I was pregnant the day after she died, so. Jesus. Sometimes I think it's her. God, I probably sound like insane, um, but like inside of me, like, but, but I guess that's hopeful. It would be a reward I don't deserve. You didn't tell me. I didn't think I had to. Gomer goes and sits down next to Habakkuk and gingerly holds her hand. She lets him. You know, 
my last night with her was weird. Like it was just weird. She brought her kids to the trampoline park for Sammy's birthday. I guess she knew I was working and afterwards she asked if I wanted to come over later. She was worried about me, I guess. I said I would as long as Tyler wasn't there as per usual, he's a prick. He was away on some business trip. That night she let me put Sammy to sleep. She let me, Balaam, take care of something that is rightfully hers also fragile like he could break into a million shards of glass at any moment just it wasn't I wasn't worthy after that I went into her bedroom and she just held me she like spooned me she let me be the little spoon I didn't feel embarrassed I didn't feel like I couldn't move or itch my foot or shift my position she didn't say a word Neither of us did. We didn't have to. I just felt the weight of her body on mine and we slept. I cried. I left the next morning before she even woke up and we never talked about it again. It was like she was this benefactor of comfort for me, only for me. Silence. Gomer digs the key out of the dirt. You know what this is for? What? Her jewelry box. Jewel, jewelry box. How predictable. I mean, <laughs> she could have been a little more creative. I found it in her room the week after it all happened, and something in me just told me to take it. Uh, I guess it sounds stupid, but uh, it's true. <laughs> Do you think she was hiding something bizarre in it, like a like a lock of Tyler's hair, or... Do you have it? The box? Yeah, it's in my car. Can we please... Yes. yes. Gomer exits to grab the box, leaving Habakkuk to walk over to Balaam, silently kiss her on the cheek, and sit down next to her. Gomer re-enters. Here. He opens the box. Gomer puts a string of pearls on and passes the box to Habakkuk. She pens a brooch to her blouse. It's Balaam's turn to play dress up and she digs around finding a note. It's, it's for me. Habakkuk, will you please read it? Dear Balaam, the shape of your back is my home. At daybreak, it cradles me. Tighter, tighter, and tighter. I feel nothing and absolutely everything. I memorize every vertebra, scan your bones with my brain pressing the picture into my palm for forever. At least I wish it so. The curve of your spine is my home. Sincerely, Jezebel. Blackout, part two. Minutes before Jezebel's death. Jezebel is at a CBS. Lights up on her bedroom. Habakkuk and Gomer are sitting weirdly formally next to each other on the bed. Silence for what feels like upwards of three years. Who do you? Don't you dare. Gomer tries to hold her hand. She karate chops him away. Okay, maybe you should just leave. God, uh, don't make me do it. Do what? Beg for you to let me stay. You know how this goes. Like, I am immediately filled with disgust for you, but mostly me. And then I dissociate, then I get really horny, and then it all happens again. So, like, let's just acknowledge we both know that and move on with our lives. Okay, buddy? Go more tackles. <laughs> glares. Buddy? So I'm your buddy now? <laughs> Interesting. Buddy boy. <laughs> like we're co-gang members in the 50s or something. Buddy boy. <laughs> Some shit. Habakkuk interrupts him with a kiss. A sweet one. It's not sexy. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> Jez is going to be so pissed. Wait, really? Um, yeah. 
We just christened her Catholic bed with sinner's flesh on flesh. She's going to be royally pissed. Well, in her defense, it's fucking weird and kind of gross. We did this in her bed when your room is literally across the hall. Well, you refuse to make love to me on my, by your standards, dirty sheets. So we had to make it work, okay? God, you're so typical. What does that mean? (laughs) The little annoying brother who likes to bother her. All she has ever done is love and accept you and treat you like her own son. Hey, I know. I was just kidding. I know that. Don't think I don't know that. Oh, defensive, are we? I'm not defensive. I I just, I know. I know she loves me. I know she accepts me. She does fucking everything for me. She's like my keeper. I don't need anyone else telling me that she, that, because I'm aware. Okay. Understood. Last night she burned my mac and cheese. <laughs> um. <laughs> not funny. Okay, 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 it's not funny. <laughs> okay, I guess that was extra, sorry. Listen, she was telling me about Tyler. Have you heard her talk about him? During this speech, a burnt smell should enter the theater. Uh, not enough to worry, worry anyone, just enough for you to notice and lock eyes with your neighbor to see if they notice too. Yeah. She said they were saying the Lord's Prayer before they fell asleep and she she messed up. She said the kingdom instead of thy kingdom or something equally as stupid. It, it made him stop cold. He scolded her. Like literally like, like, like she's a child. Like, like she said she felt like a child. She was plagued with this like intense weight of guilt. It pressed on her shoulders. She kept waking up in the middle of the night and she said it just, it felt like a fucking sleep paralysis or something. Like Jesus himself was sitting on her head. Like Jesus was (laughs) poking her. Stupid. I don't know. It sounds stupid now, but it, it wasn't, it wasn't stupid. It was scary. It was terrifying. And there was something about her that was like different. Like usually she has that. 50s housewife robot vibe going on when he's around but he wasn't around it was just her and she still she she still was playing that part like i'm not kidding it felt like she had a lobotomy or something fucking repulsive like that why are those two living in the 20th century it's honestly embarrassing for me and and for her i don't know (laughs) i'm starting to think that it's not a part anymore that it's that's her and mac and cheese (laughs) yeah well she was telling me this while she was making my mac but she burned it i was still pissed at her like even after she told me that i was still fucking livid that she burned my dinner am i a bad person by whose standard? The Catholic God. Um, yes, for sure. By you? Only a little. Gomer wax her with a pillow. It feels like a sleepover now. <laughs> How dare you? What? I'm no pussy. <laughs> oh, oh, you're gonna regret that, you frat boy piece of shit. Okay, how dare you think I'm in a frat? Hey, I don't know what goes down at Carlo. Maybe indie losers like you are letting the frats there. <gasps> okay, get over it. Habakkuk kisses him. They're interrupted by Habakkuk's phone ringing. Um, I'm sorry, what? What? E- yes, now? Okay. Blackout. Part three, one day before Jezebel's death. Jezebel is on a plane. Lights up on Gomer and Balaam and Jezebel's room. Balaam is frantically putting clothes away and making the bed. Gomer has beats on, watching something on his phone. Excuse me, dipshit, would you like to help? No response. Hello? Fucktard, get up! Jesus, okay, since when are you type A? Since Jez is going to be here in 30 minutes and we left her, or shall I say your house, a goddamn mess... I shouldn't have even stayed here knowing I knew I was going to fuck up her room. 
Why do you care? Because she does a lot for us. Mostly you, and we should at least to attempt to do the same for her. Hey, okay. Gorma makes a half-assed attempt at folding a blouse. You excited to see her? I guess. I don't know. I mean, she's my sister. Yeah. You can still be excited. I suppose. Am I supposed to ask you if you're excited now? Yes. Are you excited, Balaam? Not really. Shut up. Both smile. Beats. Bro, does this room ever creep you out? No. Really? Balaam starts casually looking through Jezebel's drawers, not for anything in particular, just annoyingly snooping. I mean, I grew up with it, you know? Yeah. Sometimes it literally felt like our mom was like <laughs> hexing the house or something. Like the way she made us go to our knees and recite those fucking fantastical chants. Bizarre, uh, the whole thing. There was this <laughs> there's this one story she reads us, she read us in, in the book of Kings, maybe. It was about a woman who like split her baby in half so her neighbor could have part of it or something. Like <laughs> what the actual fuck? But I remember thinking it was fully justified. I always found myself thinking coincidences were put in place by God. Like I would pray about a test. I'd get a good grade on the test. Then I'd be like, oh, yay, love you, God. But really, I just fucking studied. So, of course, I got a good grade, you know? Creepy. Yeah, it was. But Jez still believes it. She really, really fucking does. But it's not judgmental. It's not controlling. It's naive and innocent. I love her for it. She makes me hold on to all those stories and brainwashing and bullshit. If I'm being honest, who am I to say what's real? Yeah. I kind of feel guilty we let her go through. I mean, I don't feel responsible. It was all Tyler. Tyler knows it's wrong, but still does it for Cloud. <laughs> Jess is just ignorant. That sounds bad. Not in a bad way. She's just, she doesn't know any better. <laughs> She's like some Amish kid on Rum Springa who knows what her parents are do told her growing up and nothing else. Besides, she doesn't have a Twitter. Right? How woke can we expect her to be? I'm just waiting for Tyler to show us pictures of the token children he claimed as his own little minions and be like, yeah, I built one singular shitty house for them and forced Jesus down their throats. Give me a prize. Oh, did I mention me building said house put their parents out of jobs? Glory goes to God. Bitch. I know, it's honestly gross. Uh... Do you think like, as the progressive little liberals we are, is it fucked up that we associate with them? Like they're low key modern colonizers. It's like, they're like <laughs> collecting Pokemon cards of third world countries they've been to like. Like, like, ooh, I brushed a little girl's hair in Kenya. I taught a full grown adult man how to sing Jesus Loves Me in Haiti. I swept the floor of one orphanage in Honduras. Oh my God. I brought three binders, seven pencils, and nine notebooks to a middle school in China. Let me into heaven. Let me into heaven. Tell me I'm kind, empathetic, and sinless. But I really don't think that's why Jess does it. I really don't. Yeah, but it's why Tyler does. I guess. Are you defending him? <laughs> no, obviously not. Literally, how dare you think that? I just feel like there's gotta be some compromise. <laughs> what does that even mean? You're his brother-in-law, his kid's uncle. Don't you feel like it may be time to give up the who's the bigger man in 2020 fight? <laughs> wow. I'm just saying, like, I obviously know it's you, obviously. 
you're queer and also have gotten four BuzzFeed articles published. So like you win by default, but that's just not how his mind works. It might be time to just be the bigger person, not the bigger man. Yeah, I guess. Gomer picks up his phone and starts scrolling. Really? Mm -hmm. Don't do the shutdown thing. What shutdown thing? Oh, come on, that's not fair. I don't even know what you're talking about, Balaam. Jesus. You're literally scrolling on freaking TikTok while I'm trying to have a conversation about modern colonization and how it directly affects your family life. Hello? How do you not expect me to shut down when this is our topic of choice? Fair. Okay, fair. So how's Sky Zone? Shitty. As per usual. How so? Balaam begins to open Jezebel's jewelry box. At some point during the rest of the scene, she tries on an earring and it disappears. She thinks it fell off, but it's not on the ground. It's just nowhere. She's looking for it for the next however long it takes to find it, but she never does. It's not a big deal. Today, I literally had to rip a girl's hair extension out from one of those loose tiles in the ceiling because she jumped really high and got it torn out and almost scalped her. It was honestly kind of funny. Might have been because I ripped the pen before, but I don't know. Miranda's a bitch. Is your manager yet? Yeah, started last week on some power trip. If only she could see her basic Brandy Melville looking ass through my eyes. I had to knock her down a few pegs. Lane. I know. You gonna cruise with Connor and Ezra tonight? Uh, yeah, yeah. They took my fake last time, but I have a good feeling about it tonight. I even manifested getting my dick sucked. Nice. I'm sure you will. Yeah. We hear footsteps coming upstairs. Balaam quickly puts away Jezebel's belongings and pulls out her phone. Blackout. Part five, one month before Jezebel's death. Jezebel is downstairs making dinner, lights up on Balaam playing Scrabble on Jezebel's floor by herself. Habakkuk is quietly whispering to herself with closed eyes, rapidly scribbling in a floral notebook and whispering again. Yes, bitch, double word score. Those are Jezebel's letters. Is it exhausting? What? To have a ginormous stick up your butthole 24 hours a day. <laughs> Funny. I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just genuinely wondering. My ass is doing just fine. Thank you very much. Oh, I know it is. Jesus Christ, I can't catch a break. Come on, I'm sorry. You're just as bad as Gomer. Whoa, I take offense to that. Yeah, you should. Time passes. Why don't you take a hit? Um, because Jess is downstairs and I'm not an addict like you. You pussy. <laughs> the kids aren't even here and it's supposed to be a fun girls night. Remember fun? Did you ever experience that? <laughs> Fine. Tell no one. Roger that. Habakkuk takes a tiny puff from Balaam's weed pen. She doesn't cough at all. Oh, impressive. I take it back when I called you a pussy a few seconds ago. I appreciate that. I can't believe I cracked Mozart. Oh, shut up. I'm a lot cooler than you think. Oh, really? When's the last time you smoked? Yesterday. Um, what? Yeah, I smoked my monk. Your monk? Is that like some kind of jewel? Damn, <laughs> I thought I was the generation Zier here. Okay, no, it's like, it's, it's essential oils. It's literally just essential oil and water vapor. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Hey, stop. What? You don't have to pretend like I'm cool. I know I'm not. It just makes me feel alive and like a real person living in the real world when I'm with you. Sometimes. Oh. 
thank you, I guess. Mm. I mean, not in a weird way. It's just, I'm really trapped by my art and my apprenticeship sometimes. Yeah, I understand. My SoundCloud feels like it's strangling me sometimes, so I get it. Right. Want to play 20 questions? What, are we in seventh grade? Yes, and my favorite color is mandarin orange. LOL. Shut up. <laughs> so pancake or waffle? Pancake. Ew, you would. What the fuck does that mean? Your uppity little self would be a pancake person. Don't you want to feel the intimacy of waffle? Um, no. Too vulnerable? I don't do that. Hmm. Figures. What is Joseph like? What? What is he like? Uh -huh. You don't know. No, I don't know. Well, that's a little worrisome, Mozart. And why is that? Because he's your husband. And it's weird that you don't know what he likes. Judge me, Balaam. I can promise you, I, I know what my fucking husband likes. Especially physically, like physically, like, like with sex, so. Okay. What? I just don't really know why you would say that to me. Say <laughs> so what to you? Feel sexual about Joseph around me. Why the fuck not? I don't know why. Okay, come on, Balaam. I'm just being real with you. You know, how I am, it's just inconsiderate. That's all. You can't have both. Balaam scoffs. Seriously, you can't. I love you as a sister and friend, but there's nothing. And you know that. And quite frankly, it's unflattering when you seem to want to fuck every woman under the sun. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm just being real with you. Nice. I can tell. Look, I'm sorry. I just... I, don't you want me to be honest? So you can, like, grow? I guess. Jez and I, even Gomer, we care about you. We want you to be okay. Okay, I'm just gonna say we were gonna have an intervention with you. All of us. Excuse me? I know, I know. It's just, it, it, it might be time. It might be time to try rehab again, or at least think about it. Wow. Balaam starts packing her tiny backpack with her clothes and weed pen and dignity to leave the room. Okay, don't be dramatic, Balaam. You have to take some responsibility. You brought this on yourself. I brought it on myself? Yes, you brought it on yourself. I... Oh my god, I just... What makes you think? How can you say that? You know the power you have over me. You know I hate every inch of who I am, and I recognize I'm the biggest fuck-up to ever come from this town. So why? Why is it just okay for you to be the one? Let Jez do it. She doesn't play with me like we're 12. And what does that mean, Balaam? It means she doesn't kiss me on the cheek after I read a poem I wrote or glance at me absentmindedly while I'm changing into my pajamas or talk about her nasty sex life with me. She just holds me and doesn't make me feel guilty for it. I don't owe her anything. I don't do any of those things. Oh, but you do. <laughs> you totally fucking do. And don't gaslight me and make me think that you don't because you know it will work. I just, maybe we need a timeout. I, I think I need a timeout. Waylon, don't do that. I just need Jez. I want to be with Jez. Jez, can you come up here for a sec? No, don't you dare bring her into this. She doesn't deserve it. Oh, so you're going to make me feel guilty for that too. Habakkuk is grabbing Balaam's shoulders. Her grip is tight. No, that's not what I'm doing. She just... She doesn't want to touch you like that, and neither do I, okay? 
Balaam stares at Habakkuk as she breathes heavily. Balaam slaps Habakkuk. It hurts. Habakkuk begins to laugh. Okay. That's <laughs> okay. not what I meant. I, 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 I didn't think I could do that. I. Okay, get down. Let's just not do it. Just not do the whole thing, okay? Habakkuk smiles at Balaam and smugly kisses her cheek. Balaam casually grabs her bag, takes a hit, and heads to the door. Okay, well, I'm gonna go. <laughs> Have fun with Gomer. Oh. Are you surprised I know? You shouldn't be. Bye, Mozart. <laughs> Habakkuk is left alone in Jezebel's room. We hear an unknown voice from downstairs yell the following. Habakkuk, Balaam. Habakkuk slinks to the floor. She perhaps begins to cry. Something strange yet mundane happens. Maybe, maybe a rosary falls off the side table. Maybe the cross on Jezebel's wall turns a few inches. Maybe the Bible that lays open on her desk flips a few pages. It's not magical. It's not holy. It just is. Blackout. Part five, present, the swing set. Balaam stands alone. She repeats the same ceremony we see in part one. Her arms are outstretched as if reciting a Greek plea to the gods. The stench of French press coffee and Dior are imprinted into my breastbone. I can't get it off. I scrub, I scrub, scrub. I think I'm numb now. Or maybe you are. I can't tell. Balaam sits on the grass, crisscross applesauce. Dear Jezebel, the shape of your back is my prison. At sunset, it strangles me tighter, tighter, tighter. I feel nothing and absolutely everything. I memorize every vertebra scan your bones with my brain pressing the picture into my palm for forever at least i wish it so the curve of your spine is my prison sincerely Balin. she waits for something to happen nothing does it's not sad curtain Yay. Woo! Job, everyone. Yay, yay. Woo! Nice and short. Yep. Okay, well, that was the curve of your spine is my home. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you to our wonderful cast. I'll say their names one more time. We had Lindsay Shiner as Balaam, um, Ryan as Gomer, and Isabella as Habakkuk. Um, thank you so much for joining. You can come watch next week when we read Big Shoes by Sam Summer. Um, and make sure to donate if you can. Our GoFundMe is in um, the description. That would be wonderful. And thank you to Mrs. Packard and Mrs. Pigrass or Mr. Pigrass for uh, donating. How wonderful of you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. Thank you for writing that awesome play. Yeah. yeah, shout out to Love Olivia you. Billings for being incredibly talented. Love you. Okay, well, I guess we'll see you all next week. Thanks for joining, guys.